I would like to confess that I used to clean men's houses wearing lingerie. Usually about 20 minutes in, I would then take off the lingerie. So that would be part of the service and it would almost be like a journey for them. So I'd like to confess that I am absolutely obsessed with Rihanna and I DM her every day. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you DM her about? Well, um, I send her a lot of messages, you know, just asking her how she is. Um, I have a lot of conversations as if we were friends because in my head I believe like we're sisters, we're friends, you know. And has she ever messaged you back? Uh, no, <laughs> but one day I'm keeping the hope alive that she will. What would you like to confess today? I've got a form of OCD. That means that I have intrusive and damaging thoughts about my partner's previous past and I've spent a lot of the last couple of years thinking about what she did before me. What kind of things do you, do you end up focusing on and thinking about? So obviously we met on a dating app. So it first started with who else she met on that dating app whether they met before me, whether they liked each other more than they liked me. Uh, I heard about a couple of one night stands and the details of those one night stands really stuck in my head. I knew that one of them drove a certain car. So any it's a very popular car as well. Anytime I saw this car, it's like my heart would leap and I'd have no idea what was going on. It wasn't until I saw someone else talking in a podcast about retroactive jealousy OCD that I knew that something was actually wrong with me and I wasn't just losing my mind. You're in a relationship at the moment? I am, yeah. She's probably the only person other than you guys now who knows that I have this condition. I've sort of briefly mentioned it to one or two people, but it's not recognised and people just hear it as past jealousy. Uh, I've been called misogynistic. Uh, I've been told that I need to work on my self-esteem. I've been told that I've got low confidence. It is a form of OCD and if you don't get help or you don't seek to improve your way of thinking, it can be extremely damaging. For Like I said, for a long time, it was all I could think about. And how does it feel getting that off your chest? I, I can physically feel my, like, I feel lighter. I can actually feel like a relief that I've just said it all out loud, even if it is behind the screen. I would like to confess that I used to clean men's houses wearing lingerie. Usually about 20 minutes in, I would then take off the lingerie. So that would be part of the service and it would almost be like a journey for them, something to look forward to, you know, so I didn't start out like boom, naked. That was the service that they were, they were paying for? Yeah. Curtis, what would you like to confess? I'd like to confess that in my younger days, I was a bit of a firebug. Firebug, what does that mean? Firebug basically means set fire to things that you probably shouldn't do. What kind of things would you set fire to? Paper, my quilt, um, basically anything I could get my hands on that I thought would cause a big fire. I used to set fire to things I shouldn't have, which led to my mum removing flammable things from the house. Then I started setting fire to toilet roll, but because that was a lot, that set fire a lot quicker than paper, I panicked and I threw it at my sister <laughs> and set her, fire, her coat on fire. Was she all right? What happened? Um, we managed to get the coat off before she suffered with like any burns. So she's fine, but the coat is um, cremated. <laughs> Where did that impulse come from? I feel like it was just the easiest way for me to let go of my aggression at the time. Hi, so um, my name is Gary McGrath. So I would like to confess today that I regret the first time I ever started using drugs and uh, it ruined my life pretty much from then on. So when did you start taking drugs, Gary? I started taking drugs when I was about 14. Uh, started off just smoking weed and um, then I did work experience in a restaurant and um, I went full time in the restaurant. I left home at 15 and went full time in the restaurant and I was using a lot of speed. When I was 18, moved to London to work in a different restaurant and uh, the cocaine just kind of came along and overtook everything. So, uh, yeah, it was cocaine really that started ruining my life more than anything else. Ruined a lot of relationships, 
eventually I started becoming unreliable at work because I wasn't sleeping, I was going to work on drugs. Me and my fiance split up and I, uh, I thought the best thing I could do was to get out of London because I was killing myself with coke and I moved to Tenerife for six months. Um, I met a girl from Ireland and uh, I moved to Ireland to be with her for two years. And that was just pure alcohol and uh, drinking before work in the morning and drinking during the day at work. And uh, that, that fell apart after two years. I was estranged from my son for many years. So uh, I decided to come back to London and um, I became homeless. So you're clean now, how well, are things going? Today, I feel okay, I feel good. I have my son now, most of the time, and he's 17 and I've been very open with him, he knows everything, so. I've got a little one bedroom flat in Bromley. So everything's going, everything's going well, yeah, everything's going well. So I would like to confess a time when my friend called me and I didn't answer the call and he ended up committing suicide. Initially when it just ha when it happened, I actually thought that it was my fault. Like maybe if I would have answered the phone call, I could have, you know, convinced him not to go through. I didn't know he was at such a low point, but now it's just, I just keep on thinking back to it and just hoping that his family's okay. What does it feel like talking about that? In one way, it makes me, it reminds me of it. Like I kind of, I'm kind of watching it in my head but there's some sort of relief because I'm expressing myself. So since I'm expressing myself and I'm letting it out, for example, it's like smoking, you're letting the smoke out. So as you're talking about it, you're kind of, you're not keeping it bottled up inside, you're letting it out. So it won't be on your mind a lot, so you won't dwell on it. It's a bit of a weird one, but when I was younger, I used to drown snails. Do you feel bad about it now? Um, I feel bad about it now because Anya shouldn't have been doing that as a child or as well an adult shouldn't do that either. But I feel bad for the snails um, and also bad for myself because I didn't have many friends so I think it was like a thing that I was like, oh I don't have friends so let's do this instead. I'm a vegetarian now so I'm, I think I'm maybe giving back to society a little bit maybe. I would like to confess that I took someone's virginity when I shouldn't have. So what do you mean? What happened? Um, when I was abroad traveling, I was in a country and where I met this guy where, according to his religion and culture, it was strictly against having sex before marriage. Um, but we managed to sneak into his family home together and have sex anyway, and I took his virginity. The morning after, how did he feel? Um, he felt like he had a really great time, but he also felt really bad, like he'd committed a sin against his religion. Do you regret it, looking back? Um, I don't regret it because I had a great time, but I wish I hadn't caused someone else pain. I never looked at my father like straight in the face, looking like this, like with whole full look. How does that make you feel? I feel like maybe he thinks I was a mistake. Because you're supposed to love your kid.